watching uh, DFCC Know and Grow on thepopperie.com and today we have the privilege of having with us one of our, the esteemed sports person in Sri Lanka and one of the double internationals in the country, the living legend Asumana Ratnam. Thank you very much for joining with us sir. Thank you, thank you very much. It's uh, absolutely brilliant to have you here. You've been a person who excelled in two major sports and uh, going back uh, you were you were dubbed as uh, the fastest man in Asia uh, when it comes to athletics so for your 100 meter heroics yeah. and also you were a member of uh, the Sri Lanka national rugby football team how did you manage to balance these two acts well I to be fact you always clash I can remember taking part in athletic meet and then running over or cycling over to play an international rugby match that was in 1954 55 that time so I used to come back to the two, because athletics was a good, good, uh, what I should, shall I say, it helped me in my rugby, so I was able to do both. Uh, your first love, uh, if I am correct, uh, was atle athletics, where well, you... Athletics I started when I was very young, I was about eight or nine years when I won the first uh, um, KT, but the teaspoon race or whatever it is, I was eight or nine years old, I was a royal primary at that time. And then it was athletes came, it was natural and I took part in all the sports meet I could, all the inter sports meet. Uh, looking back, uh, we see that in 1944, 46 and 47, you've uh, won the Witten Bartley Trophy. For that, that's right, I just left school and I took part in 100 and 200 in the Nationals. And I think I won the Milton Bartley for the 100 meters, I think. 100 meters, 100 that's meters, right. Yeah. Actually, I started when I was in school, I did the inter-school 400 meters. It was 440 yards then, and 100 yards, then it changed to meters later. So, well, 100 meters was my pet event. How did you grow into be a sprinter from uh, the 400 yards? Uh, because no, it's no, a I was a sprinter first, but 440 yards was only the inter-school meter at that time. Okay. It was 1942. And then from there I switched on to, when I went for nationals, it was 100 and 200. 400 I didn't like at all. Oh, yeah. I, I disliked <laughs> that race. That, that, but I, I prefer the 100 and the 200. So you, uh, you uh, as an athlete, uh, you prefer to be on the edge, uh, be a sprinter and uh, exploit yeah. the speed, is it? Yeah, I, I had uh, to do the 100 meters. I prefer the 100 even to the 200. Even to the 200. And I was able to achieve what I wanted at that time. We have done more, but the trouble was that the grounds are not already that good. We are all we're running on grass track. There are no cinders, nothing. There you go. Uh, he would have wanted to do more, but yes. uh, remember in 1952 in the Madras State Games, yeah. uh, Mr. Navaratnam achieves 10.4 seconds for the 100 yards and uh, that no, time... No, the 100 meters. 100, 100 meters, yeah, 100 I beg your pardon. Then, so then, then, there it was all meters. So, 10.4 seconds, 400 meters is still an absolutely brilliant uh, timing and uh, uh, we wonder why you didn't turn up for the Olympics. Uh, <laughs> I would have run in the Olympics but I was concerned. The doctor, my, my coach who was a doctor, had advised the selection committee that I was medically unfit to go. Out. But I don't know what the reason was. But I, I, I presume there was a reason which I can't mention. <laughs> All right, so there you go, some <laughs> politics, even back oh in the God, day. Oh God, yes, nepotism was the highest order at that time as well. And uh, unfortunately, it still is now, uh, but uh, this it? setback did not unsettle this great personality who is a legend uh, and he graduates on to another sport while at Royal College. Uh, rugby football, it was. Uh, in 1939, you take part in uh, the inter-school, uh, inter-house uh, tournaments and uh, take on uh, rugby as a sport. Not 94, 1939. 1939, right. I was just 14 plus. And then rugby was introduced to, I was in, playing in Royal College and I played in the second 15 at that time uh, for the Royal College. And 1940, when I won my three colours, I played in the first 15. First 15 team yeah. and uh, he has achieved many landmarks when it comes to both sports, athletics and rugby. But one landmark he's very proud of, even uh, before we started filming, was that in 1941 you were a member of the team that first beat Trinity College. Yeah, I was very, we played at the Royal College grounds 
and I can win that game very well. I, I was in the team and I played quite well, I think, well, I can be this modest. But also I gave the only score to Trinity when I held on to the ball a bit too long and they got a penalty. And we won the match from 12-3 or something. And that, that three points were given because of me. <laughs> <laughs> Being very <laughs> modest <laughs> and uh, you went on to uh, represent Sri Lanka in at athletics and also in uh, rugby yeah. uh, after graduating from Royal College. And uh, what, what I see here is that as soon as you left school, you take on the responsibility of coaching in 1947. You start coaching athletics. Yes, I coached Royal College in athletics and I can remember that we won the Tarpet and Jefferson that year. And in the years I represented Royal, that's 1940 and 41, 42 there was no inter inter school and 43 we won the uh, Tarpet and Jefferson. Champion, uh, champion school, and then I, when I left school, I took, uh, I coached, in, I helped in the coaching of that thing. Mr. Breen was coaching the uh, master, and I helped him in the. I mean, and uh, what was the reason for you to get into coaching at such a young age? Because you were in your prime, especially in both sports, in athletics and also rugby. Uh, what was the reason that no, drove you to? I, I loved athletics at that time. You see, but rugby was just another pastime, so I was not. It was, it was a friendly game those days and I was not that interested in rugby till I was asked, forced to join the CRNFC. I used to play actually for the Colombo clubs. That was a team during the war. It was a combined CHCR, Havelocks and the police all combined and played together as the Colombo clubs. This is, uh, this is when you represented Trilla, that no, club no, to play? No, before, uh, before, before that. Then thereafter that I started representing Sri Lanka. Okay. In, when I, was here, I can't remember the date. So, in Colombo clubs is uh, the time that you uh, represented uh, that team which played against the British Lions, I believe. No, 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 not the Colombo. It was the Sri Lanka side. With the Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka side. side in 51. All right. I think 50 or 51. I can't 1951 it is. 1951 yes. against the British Lions. And uh, you said you weren't that interested in rugby, but. Uh, no, it was this a game that I, you know, I was not that serious about the game. If I play, got what selected I played, otherwise just left out. But yeah. your fo main focus was on athletics to excel time, as yeah. an athlete. That, that's right. That's All right. right. And uh, also, uh, Mr. Ravatnam, well, going on from athletics to rugby, you represented uh, Sri Lanka uh, and then uh, you continued your rugby at CR and FC yeah. um, as a club rugby player. Looking back at those days up to now, uh, how do you think the transition of club rugby has happened? How do you think, uh, how, how do you see uh, the difference in the game played now? Uh, that's a very good question because the game has changed so much so that the talent and the, and the expertise of individuals is gone now. It's all teamwork and all, you, you know, earlier you could spot talent by their the speed, athletics was very, very important and the speed of players and their game skill was spotted. Now there is nothing there. It's all first phase, second phase, third phase and all the players look alike. And soon, soon there might come a time soon when all the players will be like forwards. That's what I feel and that's going to be bad for the game of rugby. Game of rugby. And uh, Mr. Aradham, you are very much involved still with uh, the runnings of rugby because uh, you are in charge of uh, the Royal College Sumanarad Rugby Academy, yeah, which uh, right. looks uh, grade ones and twos, if I'm not wrong. No, it was grade Royal. one and two. Ah, that's right, grade one and two. Really, it was uh, under ten, under twelve. Then we shifted. Then the professional coaches came in. I shifted on to amateur team to grade one and two, which was not accepted by the head coaches. So I took up and started. The, I mean, it was given to me to start off this. So, uh, he says uh, he moved on to grade 1 and 2. So remember, this is the time that you fall in love with rugby. Uh, the grade 1s and 2s, oh, uh, yeah, those, yeah, those yeah. boys are, those young kids are the ones who would try their luck at rugby. And uh, it's your responsibility to make sure that they fall in love with rugby. It is not rugby now, the academy doesn't stick to rugby alone. You see, we start off with tennis ball, then we get on to the football and the, and the basketball. Then there is also athletics training and the last is rugby. 
you see. So that they are tuned for any sport, I mean they reach the age of 14 or 15 to go to any sport they want. Any discipline, not only stick to rugby. So right. rugby comes in the third term of the of the of the year. All right. That's right. And then they start developing, and then we start uh, participating in international. We take them to say, now last time, last two years, we taken them to Singapore to participate in the Centaur's international mini rugby carnival, and that helps them to uplift their game. You know, exposure at that age. Some are against it, but I, I am for it. Okay. Yeah. Some are again taking the young boys on these carnival trips. But uh, that's the exposure that they get at a young age. Young and age when and that's the age that they forget about fearing any foreign player. And so that comes in useful as they come along into the... Absolutely. That's a, that we think is a problem that we've had going forward because uh, the exposure that uh, the Sri Lankans get playing against the foreign players that is, is a problem yeah, that, that we've That's had. why we kept losing early in the same because we never played against them. We wanted the foreign players to play with us. So we used to pass the ball, uh, the, our players used to pass the ball to the foreign players and what the, what the players, those players running. While they just, what the match, what the match. So, but playing against foreign teams all the time is very good. That there wouldn't be anyone better to ask about the Bradby. Uh, we are almost close to uh, 2017's edition of Brad B. 2015, you were a guest of honor at uh, the Brad B. I yes. remember you being introduced to uh, the players as well. Mr. Naradnam, this time around, what are your thoughts on Brad B and how do you think that will uh, unfold? Well, watching, uh, I have not seen Infinity play this year, but from the report I hear, they've got a very good chance. But Royal does the unexpected. You can never know what's going to happen. And, but unfortunately, this, uh, in my opinion, the time factor of players now in this heat is 40 minutes, a uh, half is too much. Especially the kids. I mean, they are all 19 years old. And I think 30 minutes is the ideal for them, not 40. And that's why I don't know if they're going to change it or not, but I hope they change it because the boys can't. I can remember one match recently, the both Royal and the opposite side almost gave up at the last 10 minutes. They both tired and this injury started taking place. When they are tired, they go, tend to go high for tackles, high tackles, and do the wrong thing. So they are, even their good rugby, they have learned, uh, is forgotten. Because they are too tired. So my opinion is they should get back to 30 minutes of the, again. Sraradnam, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to be speaking with you today. Uh, thank you for sparing your time for the papari.com to have this uh, small chat and uh, explain to our viewers how you manage the two international careers. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for all. Thank you so much. Right.